82 is J.P. Dillon. Today we're looking at a late 1970s Sony model CVM-1250. Not PVM, not BVM, but CVM, as in commercial video monitor. This is a 12-inch from about 1978-79, I believe. And it has uh, BNC 75-ohm composite inputs as well as a tuner in it, as you can see. And this was typically used in the educational scene or in, you know, somewhere like a hospital or something where it could be controlled. It's a pretty robust cabinet. Lots of ventilation, side handles. And if we move to the back here, hard to see, but we have our antenna connections. And we have a pass-through for our audio and video. We have our VTR connections and our line-in connections. And the problem with this guy is, is it's had a failure in the color burst circuit. And I'll turn this on so you can see it. But no matter where you set the color, it's just so faint. That's the color control turned all the way up. And you can see here that there's barely any noticeable color at all. And I can turn it down, and there's black and white, and I can turn it all the way back up. And there's our pathetic color, if you can even see the difference in color. And that happens regardless of whether you're on the tuner or whether you're on the line-in. Um, it doesn't really matter. So we're going to crack this thing open, and we're going to see what the cause is. I'm going to make a guess that it's either in the burst amp or in the color killer circuit that's causing this failure. Now these sets are replete with Panasonic capacitors that typically short or open or leak. So I don't have any doubts in my mind that there's probably something to do with that. But let's get the back off and take a look inside. I do kind of like that it has the old press board style back like you would have saw on early Japanese color sets. Most of the time, you see these things with dead CRTs because in the environments that they were in, they were always on, they were always displaying something, so you'd either get burn in if it was in like an airport or a hospital, or it would just be simply wore out. Now, if you were lucky enough to get it in a school setting, it was probably only used once in a while for educational purposes. Maybe in the broadcast room, if the school had a, a would-be TV station. Or maybe just, you know, watching videos. This one is a particularly low-hour set. And that's kind of a good thing because I can't imagine where I'd be finding the CRT for this guy. And there it is. And you can see, or maybe you can't see, but let me move the camera in. But this is our video board here with all of its lovely Panasonic capacitors, which are peeing down the leads, of course. So this board's going to have to come out. And hopefully it's just a matter of, there's a screw behind here too, but we have to take this off. Now, I think, I don't know this for certain because it's been so many years since I've worked on one of these, uh, that the whole chassis and everything slides out. But I honestly don't remember because the last time I worked on one of these was probably about close to 20 years ago. So I'm a little rusty at this. But you can see you have your sweet board here. Uh, this is your video processing board, and this is your IF in color, I believe. That's all that is. And then you've got your flyback behind this board, and you've got your tripler with your electrostatic con convergence controls. Hopefully the little pass-through thingamachigus that goes through the core isn't broken, but if it was, it wouldn't be running. Can I even zoom in on that guy? 330LB22. So, yeah, good luck finding one of those. But definitely a modular layout 
definitely meant to be serviced. Now, another thing I'm seeing in audio gear is these black United Chemicons are starting to get bulgy and fail. I don't know if that's going to be true of this one, but it's the same type of capacitor, so you got to watch out for those too. But uh, let's see if I can find some service literature, or at the very least, the section where the color would be processed, and see if we can turn up some information that would help us better troubleshoot. So basically, to get the thing to slide out of the case, the screws that were holding the back on also held the chassis in, and these points here. And then it looks like we just have two left here on the bottom, and then we'll loosen the plates there and we should be able to just slide the whole shebang out. There's also a screw down there just to the left of the volume control that needs to come out too. And so once we get the screws loose you can see that the chassis comes out of the cabinet and makes everything a little bit easier to service. Uh, I believe that this board is supposed to come out. But yeah, a lot better access here. Soldering isn't too bad, although I'll definitely have to go through these connections here. These are all kind of awful. And then underneath that shield is more components, probably for the video. But really, right now I need to focus on where the color processing section is and focus on that. Alright, so I'm having a bit of a trouble trying to find the any kind of service literature for this. I found a website containing what was supposed to be the service manual, but the link is dead. So I even went to kind of some scary looking places. So anyways, what we're looking at, this is the color drive board. And the big tubular looking thing is the old fashioned delay line. Uh, the overlooking thing there, that's your color crystal. So probably somewhere in here, is going to be the fault. Now, I think I'm really going to have to do some recapping because if you know, if we just look at some of these capacitors here, like this guy, who's literally, I don't know if you can see that, but he's just kind of peed everywhere and the leads are all black and crusty. Uh, a lot of these caps are that way and they just need to go. Now, I don't know if that's going to fix it, but there's probably 10 or 15 of them in here that have all suffered that fate, and they really need to come out. And I don't know if uh, there's any evidence behind it because they're mounted horizontally, but you know, there's no board damage behind the, the leaky caps. So, but like over here, this is your automatic color control section here, so I'd suspect that something in this circuit may be to blame. Uh, I'm sure the pissing caps aren't helping it any. So, as much as I hate blanket recapping, I'm pretty much going to have to do that on this one, and then we'll fire it up and see if that's cured our issue. But these are all, these sets are all getting to the point where they're all going to need to be recapped. I really hate to do that, but especially all these purple Matsushita pissers, they all got to go. So let me focus on changing the uh, obviously dead ones, and then we'll fire this thing up and see uh, if we're able to get our color back. Because, you know, if something in the ACC section is bad or the color killer section is bad, that's going to piss things off. Color AFT. There's your IF stage here. So yeah, let's uh, let's get to that. So here's our plethora of capacitors we yanked, and these are all showing signs of death here. When the leads get really hazy, you could tell that they're starting to outgas. Uh, all these 33 microfarad capacitors are all really leaky, like this one. This one has got it the worst. Come on, focus, focus. See how the leads are all crusty? 
So that's pretty much expired. So all these came out of the color section, minus the oscillator, because we were getting good block. It was just weak. So out of curiosity, I'm going to kind of test these things and see if I find any that are outright leaky. So as expected, the uh, 33 microfarads are all leaky there. That's um, R times what? R times 100? Got some deflection there for sure. Uh, the 10 microfarads are leaky. The 1 microfarads were okay. The 4.7s were okay. The 100 microfarad at 25 was leaky. The 100 at 16 was leaky. So, yeah, they're, they're pretty much all bad. But let's fire up the set and see if we made any improvements to our color picture. All right, so I got it all hooked up. Now I'm going to make a correction here. This actually dates from about 82, not 70s. Let's turn on my generator here. Yeah, so we got our color back. And we got, other than a dirty control, we got lots of it. So I can turn it all the way down and it's gone. I can turn it up and it just keeps getting brighter and brighter. And then as far as our tint, yeah, so those controls are kind of nasty. But those are easy to clean. Let's get under the bottom of the set and we'll just clean them real quick. See, they're just right here at the bottom. So I'm just going to use my trusty fader lube and spritz all these, clean the switch. And then uh, we'll just put it back together because that's really what our issue was. And other than that, it already performs well except for when the color died on it. So I think that's all I'm going to do on it for now. And eventually it will get all recapped, but uh, for now I just, it's another shop TV that I use for testing equipment with. So I'm going to just leave it as is for now because I don't have the time to tear it all down and do it. So we'll just give these a spritz. And then I'll need two hands because i got to put it on its side and work them. All right, well, here she is all back together. Probably have to readjust our color and everything. Really? That's funny. So we're not fixed at all. We're back to our old self again. So more troubleshooting is in order. Make sure none of my switches are affecting anything. Nope, we're just back to weak color again. So that was a false positive. So there's obviously, oh, look at that. Intermittent connection. So time to take it apart again and go over the boards. Because we obviously have a loose connection somewhere now that it's, yeah, now it's happy, of course. So apart it comes and we got to resolder those boards. All right, so we got it back out of the case again. I'm just gonna try to go over this board here and just see if we find anything that would be obvious. Now, there's a problem and that is, is that a lot of this solder may look okay on the outside, but we also may have oxidation of the lead that passes through the solder or crystallization of the solder grabbing it like that there. That looks suspicious. Yeah, we're just going over the board. But we're going to do a little more in-depth troubleshooting rather than pulling the board and resoldering about 900 connections. It just doesn't seem like it's going to work to me. Let me get around this mess here our ACC, all that stuff in this area. 
but you saw as soon as we slammed the control door, the color came back. So there's obviously a loose connection somewhere, and there's no switch in the door. It goes between ACC and regular color, so not thinking that's going to be it either. So let's put a signal on it and do some more troubleshooting. So of course right now it's not going to screw up for me, but that's just kind of par for the course. What we are going to do is with the butt of a screwdriver I'm going to very gently tap on the board in question in different areas. So right now this is going to be the back right quadrant. No changes there. Back left quadrant. No changes there. I'm just generally tapping all over on the board to see if I can reveal anything. Noisy tuner. But and then our input controls really aren't noisy either. Auto off or on. That's not really changing anything. Our color control seems to be working, as does the brightness. So let me get a smaller tool. In this case, we're going to use this little fiberglass rod. But no points of sensitivity at all. So Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get an insulated screwdriver and we're going to come over here to the color controls and see if messing with them has any effect. Make sure there's no dirty pots or anything. Let's reach in here, blow the setup. Yeah. Our tin control is a little bit dirty, but again, that's not going to kill it. Let's see if there's anything more to mess with here. Color AFT. Let's rock our IF controls. Those look happy. So then. Color output can also be affected by feedback on the horizontal board. So let's come over here and tap a tap a. Neck board, horizontal drive. Nope. This is a puzzler, huh? Not sure what to think about this one. There's obviously an intermittent there, but. As far as us being able to reveal it yet, not so. Now there could also be the issue with thermal cycling because right now it's a lot colder than it was when I first started this video. And so we could have a thermal problem. Uh, or it could be the joints are only failing when the solder warms up. So I think I'm going to yank this board again and just very carefully go over it and do some resoldering in the color section. Just because on these Sonys, the soldering can look good, but it will present problems like we see here. So maybe some resoldering is in fact in order. And then I'm going to do that and put it back together and hope that it works. Now with a super bright light, we start to see some problems. Now looking just to the left to see 328 and R346, we can see that there is some degradation of the solder there. Top R303 looks pretty cruddy. And I apologize for the stripey effect, but that has to do with the refresh light or refresh of the light, which is an LED. Another reason why I'm not fond of LEDs, but there's no incandescent that provides this level of luminance that uh, doesn't get you know stupid hot. So, but yeah, that right side of R302 up there, you can see the flux where I replaced the capacitors. That should probably be all cleaned off. Left side of RC305, definitely a ring around the solder thing there. So, 
and just looking up to. So this is really a candidate for re-solder. As much as I hate having to do that, there's probably some intermittent connection there that's messing with us. Likewise, if I come down here, just above where it says R317, that solder joint's done. Left side of R317, that's done. All those, those are just, you get some bright light on them and you can see them. Before, we didn't really see it all that well. So, good thorough examination. So, I'm going to go ahead and resolder this board. And then we'll, uh, we'll check it again. All right. So we have this section of the board resoldered, which is all the color and video section. I doubt that this is going to make any visible change right now. Okay, there we go. So now we're back to our no color. That's kind of cool. And let's poke around here. Good that we're in a complete failure mode. And it's obviously not vibration that's the problem. So now we have to take a look at the ACC section and see if we did anything wrong there. So although the ACC control does still work and I can obviously turn the color up and down like this, it's almost like a an on and off point here. So maybe we need to look at our killer section or color killer section, wherever that might be. And like I said, I don't have any service literature, so that's a little tricky. But that could be where we're wigging out, too. And if, before you think it's just tuner, because I'm coming into the tuner, this problem happens regardless of whether I'm on video or uh, RF. So it's a set problem. We also notice a little bit of lack of contrast. So... I need to poke around a little bit more. All right, so I think I figured it out here. The point of sensitivity was around here. Um, and I noticed that when I adjusted the ACC control, there was a point where it was either just on or off. Um, and so I ohmed it out, and it's true that there is a crack in this wafer. Um, so fast forward a bit, uh, it's a 5k pot. I replaced it and set it up and now I've got nice, brilliant color again. How that potentiometer got cracked, I have no idea. Uh, it's really kind of weird to me. Uh, but now we have nice bright color. And furthermore, if I turn the control through its range... You go all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. And it just gradually goes away, which is what you would think it would be. So, yeah, that other potentiometer was bad. And it's just kind of weird for it to die like that. So I'm not sure if I manhandled the set at some point and it got dropped or what. Uh, but I suppose we can just check our grayscale and stuff right now. But this all actually looks really good. I don't think I need to do much of anything to this. Convergence is pretty spot on, too. Definitely need to clean that picture control. Let me go find my contact cleaner. So today we're going to use some Neutral 401. Interesting how this has two potentiometers. Spray both of them. And then work it a bunch. So that's that. Oh, what a weird failure. 
a little tiny potentiometer goes bad. Okay, uh, I'm trying to see if I should do any more adjustments while I'm in here. Maybe we'll stick it on a live signal and see how the grayscale looks. So right now, on a black and white picture, you can't really tell because the camera's auto white balance is really doing a good job of correcting it. Uh, but we do have a little bit of excessive red. Uh, let's see where the adjustments are on this one. I think those are it right there. Yep, those are definitely our screen controls. Those are really touchy too. So let's back them off a little bit here. And we'll just start over with red. And we'll go to magenta. And then we'll come up to black and white. Yeah, these old pots are really touchy. Maybe they're just all dying. Who knows? It's like they are not. Just like that color control was. Yeah, that looks okay. Definitely a lot better. As far as the drives go, drives are pretty decent. This tube's got a lot of life left in it still. Let's uh, switch over to something more modern. Yeah, that looks a lot better now. Uh, definitely could use a sharpness adjustment if we have one, but I don't think we do. Maybe a focus adjustment. Yeah, it looks decent. I am a little, I think the whites have a hair too much green drive. Just a little tiny bit. That's better. And then we'll go back to a blank channel. Now we see this is a shade of green. That's all right. Adjust the screen a little bit. Yeah, that's why we're not seeing any videos because it's just garbage there. Gotta make sure not to hang on that long. We have lots of over-the-air channels, just nothing to watch. So that looks okay. The focus is a little soft on it. Let's go back to my crosshatch. I don't know. Maybe it's a video response. It actually is pretty crisp. Let's adjust our H static here. Oh yeah. Whoop. That looks pretty good. Let's see if I'm missing the focus control here. I don't think so. Shed some light on it. Vertical size, centering, pin cushion, all that. Horizontal centering. Here we got our screen. That's our H stat. 
Am I just oblivious here and the focus is staring at me and I'm not seeing it? Well, it doesn't terribly need it, really. I mean, it's just... Looks pretty good as is. That pincushion I dialed in the last time pretty good, so it's convergence and everything looks happy. Okay. And let's go back to our color bars. And we're back to dim color bars again, really? Oh, there we go. I just had the color turned all the way down. I was going to say, not again. Correct representation. Oh, yeah, this thing's good. All right, back together it goes. All right, so it's back together. Nice, fancy-looking picture on it. And I'm just going to burn it in and run it for a while, and... With any luck, there will be nothing else that is needed. I think I want that. Oh, it's a light reflection. I'm like, what is that spot there on the screen? But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of like weird little troubleshooting adventure. And yeah, caps were bad, but caps weren't the cause. It was that ACC potentiometer had a crack in the wafer. And replacing that, now we have a nice big bright color picture. Everything's dialed in and it looks great. So... If you ever you find one of these things, these uh, CBMs, pretty cool little set. And they typically don't go for the price that the PBMs and the BBMs do. And uh, just a good quality, in my picture, uh, opinion, as far as the picture. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching, guys. More stuff to come.